acting, produced an impression of strength, although, as I have already mentioned, not always, sometimes there was too much of it. I was particularly attracted by his sense of humor and the complete absence of any pretensions to sanctity, or to the possession of miraculous powers, although, as we became convinced later, he possessed then the knowledge and ability of creating unusual phenomena of a psychological character. But he always laughed at people who expected miracles from him. He was an extraordinarily versatile man, he knew everything and could do everything. He once told me he had brought back from his travels in the east a number of carpets among which were many duplicates and others having no particular value from an artistic point of view. During his visits he had found that the price of carpets in Petersburg was higher than in Moscow, and every time he came he brought a veil of carpets which he sold in Petersburg. According to another version he simply bought the carpets in Moscow at the Tolkuchka and brought them to Petersburg to sell. I did not altogether understand why he did this, but I felt it was connected with the idea of acting. The sale of these carpets was in itself remarkable. G put an advertisement in the papers and all kinds of people came to buy carpets. On such occasions they took him, of course, for an ordinary Caucasian carpet seller. I often sat for hours watching him as he talked to the people who came. I saw that he sometimes played on their weak side. One day he was either in a hurry or had grown tired of acting the carpet seller and he offered a lady, obviously rich but very grasping, who had selected a dozen fine carpets and was bargaining desperately, all the carpets in the room for about a quarter of the price of those she had chosen. At first she was surprised but then she began to bargain again. G smiled and said he would think it over and give her his answer the next day. But next day he was no longer in Petersburg and the woman got nothing at all. Something of this sort happened on nearly every occasion. With these carpets, in the role of traveling merchant, he again gave the impression of a man in disguise, a kind of Harun al-Rashid, or the man in the invisible cap of the fairy tale. Once, when I was not there, and, a cultist, of the charlatan type came to him, who played a certain part in some spiritualistic circles in Petersburg and who later became a professor under the Bolsheviks. He began by saying he had heard a great deal about G and his knowledge and wanted to make his acquaintance. G, as he told me himself, played the part of a genuine carpet seller. With the strongest Caucasian accent and in broken Russian he began to assure the occultist that he was mistaken and that he only sold carpets, and he immediately began to unroll and offer him some. The occultist went away fully convinced he had been hoaxed by his friends. It was obvious that the rascal had not got a farthing, added G, otherwise I would have screwed the price of a pair of carpets out of him. A Persian used to come to him to mend carpets. One day I noticed that G was very attentively watching how the Persian was doing his work. I want to understand how he does it and I don't understand yet, said G. Do you see that look he has? The whole thing is in that. I wanted to buy it from him but he won't sell it. Next day I came earlier than usual. G was sitting on the floor mending a carpet exactly as the Persian had done. Wools of various colors were 